It is the 14th of September. It is embargo lifting day for all the information on the new Triumph Speed RR. Now, I know your YouTube subscription fees are gonna be full of videos saying they've got the latest scoop on this machine, but here, here, is where we're gonna talk about it in detail. No holes barred, discussing all the specs, discussing the looks. This video is the one you want to watch. I do enjoy a first look video, so let's roll the intro. So this one was a little bit of a surprise for me where this has come from. I mean, this new Speed Triple came out last year. Absolutely love that bike. I spent a lot of time riding that last year on the road. I've also done a track day on it and I can tell you it's a fantastic bike. So I know before we even get started that this RR is gonna be fantastic to ride. The RR has all the same engine electronics as the Speed RS but it just has really revised ergonomics and different suspension, which we'll cover in a second. So first off, let's have a look at this machine. It looks absolutely fantastic. The first thing I love about it is it's actually got some in, an interesting paint scheme. This is a candy red paint on this one. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the standard color and it's another 250 pounds, I think it is, for this candy, but it's a candy red with a bit of gray candy red, what do they call it exactly? This red color is called the Red Hopper with Storm Gray Scheme, which is uh, meant to be a very lustrous paint scheme, a candy red. The other color this bike is in is in the white and gray, which they call the Crystal White with Storm Gray. Now that is a standard paint scheme. So 250 extra for the candy red, but that's the two colors this bike's available in. Main details with the styling, I mean, it's all about that cowl, isn't it? The cowl looks like it uses the same headlight that's in the Rocket, one of the headlights from the Rocket, full LED. I think it looks rather smashing, especially the round headlight. Yeah, I know why you like it. Reminds you of your mum. Triumph for calling this bike uh, a sports bike. You know, of course it only has a cowl, it's not fully fared. It's, it's tr what Triumph is saying is this is their take of the ultimate road sports bike. They're not saying this is a, a dedicated track machine. I'm sure it'll be fantastic on track as well because they've equipped it with super coarser tires and amazing suspension. But this is their take on the ultimate road sports bike for the road. The ergos on this compared to the speed is the bars are 135 millimeters lower. They're also 50 millimeters forward. So you've got a bit of a drop bar the bike does also have cruise control, which is a must on a sports bike. So you can, if you do get any weight on your wrists, you can alleviate that with the cruise control. The same system as what is on the Speed Triple. The foot pegs are slightly higher than the Speed RS and slightly further back, but I think that will be fine. I don't think that will be too extreme. The engine is exactly the same spec as what is on the Speed RS, not even retuned, exactly the same. So it's 177 horsepower, 128 newton meters of torque. That engine is fantastic. This engine was all new for the Speed last year, remember? And I think we can see this engine going into further Triumph range. I think this engine is obviously what's in the new Tiger, which is coming, a derivative of this engine, which is probably has been retuned for the Tiger. But in this bike, it's exactly the same mapping, exactly the same spec, exactly the same power. So I, we know what this bike is gonna ride like. If you've ridden the new Speed RS, you know this is gonna be a weapon. Loads of torque, masses of top end, 177 horsepower. This thing is gonna be quick. I'm not sure if there's been any change to the gearing. Triumph haven't mentioned this, but I'm assuming the gearing is the same as the speed. So yeah, it's gonna be quick. Now the major change for this bike is actually the suspension. The speed was heavily criticized. It was a little bit too hard for the road. The Olin system was quite hard. The bike I rode had all the compression and rebound wound out of it. So it was actually much more comfortable, but it was still quite a sporty ride. For the RR, they fitted the Odin's EC2 electronic suspension. So I've ridden that suspension on the new Tuono and it's got a fantastic range from comfort to sporty. So if you have that bike in the comfort mode, then I know it can be very, very comfortable on the road, which for a sports bike, if you've got that forward position, you don't want lots of jarring coming through the bars because it really does affect your wrist. 
So with that Olin's EC2, EC2 suspension, I'm really rather excited because that should give it the ability to go super comfortable to super sporty. And that is, took me by surprise they'd put that on the bike. I think this is only the second bike Triumph's ever done with electronically adjustable suspension. The first being the, the Tiger 1200, I believe. Continuing with the sporty nature of the bike, it's fitted with Diablo Rosso Corsa SP tires, the V3 version. Now this is the dual compound version, not the solid super sticky all the way around. So it's got a slightly harder compound in the middle, but they're super sticky tires. So um, they're not trying to disguise what this bike is going to be used for. This, is, this bike is very much focused on performance, I would say. The electronics is exactly the same as the Speed RS. So it's got the five inch TFT. You've got a variety of rider modes, road, rain, sport, track, and a rider configurable mode. The worst thing about the electronics on this bike is the wheelie control is tied in with the traction control. It has got separate lift control via the IMU, but they're tied together. So the wheelie control is tied to the rider modes and the traction control. So if you go in track mode, it gives sort of minimal intervention, but in the road modes, on the, on the RS, it let you wheelie a little bit, but uh, if you're a bit of a wheelie hooligan, you can't disconnect the, the traction control from the wheelie control, which did annoy me on the speed, but as this is more of a sports bike, it may not be so much of an issue. It's not a hooligan super naked. Also has the quick shifter up and down. That electronics package on that bike, apart from the wheelie control, is actually very, very good. So exactly the same as the speed. Nothing wrong with it, works very, very well. Braking is handled by Stylema calipers and Brembo discs, the same as what's on the RS. So the braking, and it also has the MCS adjustable master cylinder as well, like the RS. That brakes on the RS are the best brakes in the business. So um, also that whole front end on the RS was one of the best front ends I've ever ridden. So will the, will the move of the handlebars affect the handling? I would have thought only for the better to give the bike a bit more feel. It may make it a little bit slower to turn because it was very quick turn steering on the RS, but with the drop bars, it should stabilize it a little bit more, a little bit more weight over the front wheel. And I think this thing is going to absolutely handle like it's on rails. It's gonna be amazing handling. I'm sure it is, especially with that adjustable suspension. So I'm really rather excited to ride this bike, I can tell you. Remember the Speed RS had that lovely carbon mudguard? Well, that's been extended to the radiator shrouds, the, the little piece that goes underneath the tank is carbon. And also the belly pan has a little like plastic bit above it. That's also color coded on it. So there's a bit more carbon fiber on this bike. I think there's also a bit of carbon fiber around the cowl area as well. So you can see this is a premium motorcycle and that is reflected in the price. This bike is just under 18,000 pounds, 17,995 pounds, I believe. Let, let me check the paperwork. Mavis, can you remember how much it is? 17,995, was it? It cost 17,950 yeah. pounds yeah, in the UK. It. You're right. You're very welcome, miserable git. 17,950, so 50 quid change from your 18,000 pounds. So it's a large chunk of money. But bikes with this EC2 electronic suspension, they are expensive. I mean, this is £3,000 more roughly than the Speed RS. And they've put some extra detailing, some extra carbon on it, the electronic suspension. So £18,000 is a rather large chunk of one's Wonga. But if I had to guess how much this bike was going to be, I would have said £18,000. If you look at other bikes with this same spec, with that EC2 electronic suspension, 18 grand is about where they're coming in. And this bike has lots of carbon, lovely paint. So um, 18 grand, it's a lot of Wonga, a lot of Wonga. The pillion seat is included with the bike. So you get the pillion seat plus the cowl, which is quite nice. Most other manufacturers will charge you extra for the seat cowl covering that comes with the bike. I like their thinking. Seat height is 830 millimeters, exactly the same as the Speed RS. So the Speed RS's seat is quite narrow, so shorties can get their legs on the ground. There's no adjustable seat options with this, exactly the same as the Speed. But it's not an overly tall bike, but I'm six foot two. If a bike is a little bit tall, I don't notice it because I'm a big, tall fat bugger. The electronic suspension also adjusts when you go through the different modes. So if you go road mode, the suspension adjusts. If you go sport, the suspension adjusts. So it's a bit like the double R I've got back there. That's the same thing in road mode. It goes nice and comfortable. Go to sport mode, it'll obviously firm up a little bit. I don't know if you can then go in and tailor the suspension. So 
There is a custom mode, so maybe in the custom mode you can go in and choose how you want the electronic expansion to be set. What would be really nice is the way uh, Aprilia have implemented this system whereby you can set your own map for suspension so you can have a comfort, a sport or a track setting let's say for the suspension and then you can assign each of those to a different rider mode. That works really well but I have a feeling that this is just going to be tied in with the rider mode so the, the road mode would be comfortable, the sport mode would be slightly, the track mode would be really hard so that's okay but a little bit more flexibility would be nice on the electronic suspension settings. Keyless ignition is back like on the speed, mm, not too bothered about that. 10,000 mile service interval, two year warranty, 177 horsepower, 125 newton meters of torque, 199 kilos wet, so nice and light, just like the speed. Mm, that's gonna be nice. 15 and a half litre fuel tank, that is one criticism with the speed, the tank is not very big and if you're giving it a lot of right wrist you can burn through that fuel quite quickly so 15 and a half litres I'd like to have seen 16 and a half litres really or 17 litres um, yeah a bigger tank would have been nice what else can we say <clears throat> I think that's about it to be honest I think that is all of the specs I'm pretty excited about this bike I I'm a bit of a convert with sports bikes on the road it's why I love the Beamer it's such a good road bike and I think Triumph have made this bike as a road bike. Yeah, I know everyone was wishing they'd put a full fairing on it and make it. It's not a new Daytona. It's not a new Daytona. This is sort of a, a retro calf looking, but a little bit retro looking, but very much modern. Modern power, modern electronics. You know, it's not part of their heritage range. You know, this is very much a sports bike with just some retro touches to it. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Ooh, it's exciting. It's very exciting. So of course, if you enjoyed the video, press that subscribe button. I tend to, I don't do these videos all the time, but if there's a new bike coming out which really piques my interest, I'll do one of these first look videos. But uh, I think this new RR has really piqued my interest. So uh, if you've enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. Massive thanks to my patrons and members. If it wasn't for you, I couldn't do all these videos I'm doing at the moment. So really appreciated for your support. Everybody else, press that like button, press that subscribe button, and join the fun. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That is the end of the news.